Okay. We are. We are live. This is what will be the first episode of my new Sunday streaming series, which I've decided to call uh, How Draw, because I want to learn how to draw better. Um, when I started streaming uh, on Thursday, my free art uh, stream, which um, will be each Thursday, I started by saying that I couldn't possibly be worse prepared and uh, the universe provides, so I'm even less prepared now. But we've started, okay? So what will we be doing in this live stream series? We will be looking at this book, at Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life, and going through it bit by bit. Now, the astute re readers, viewers, will remember that I actually did this already on the... Um, in between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Uh, but I wanted to start fresh in a new format so that, that uh, you can get everything in the same quality and the same uh, format in one playlist instead of having to go back to the um, YouTube Shorts format uh, live and um, you know. So yeah, I basically wanted to do th the beginning here one more time. But first I need to log on here and uh, find the chat so that I can also answer your questions while I draw. I will be mostly focusing on the questions of uh, uh, my those who send super chats, those who are members, and uh, questions relevant to what we're talking about. And I will be ignoring uh, the the more random questions. Okay, now I can see the chat. Du -du 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 -du. I'll have to press pop out chat. Does Kim respond to chat? Yes, but I will be ignoring quite a lot of the chat because we will be focusing on learning how to draw. Do you guys hear me well? So, first of all, we need something to draw with. Oh, oh, oh hi! Now, I'm so unprepared that I don't even have a pencil prepared, but that doesn't matter because I have copy machine in paper and I have a colored pencil that I probably stole from my kids. What is my streaming schedule? I will be doing one of these learning how to draw streams every Sunday at this time, uh, 19 o'clock Norwegian time. And I will be doing uh, a uh, pre-art uh, stream every Thursday at the same time, 19 o'clock Norwegian time, GMT plus one. And I will have the info about that up 
on my um, I will display the info more readily okay how much experience do I have drawing is one of the questions and that's pretty relevant to this book because I first got introduced to these books when I was um, I just need to figure out how to place the camera better is that better so you can see my big nose Boop, boop, boop. So I first got these books when I was probably around four or five years old. Uh, and I've been training with these books and other books and drawing every day to express myself. Um, basically since I was one year old. So I do have some experience drawing. Now, for those who don't know the Bridgman book, uh, Bridgman was a uh, teacher at the Art Students League or something in New York, at the New York School of Art, maybe. He had a cheap drawing class in the 1910s and 20s and 30s. And that means a lot of the kids who didn't have money to, for... Uh, and a lot of the young people who didn't have money for um, other art classes went to his art class. Therefore, uh, people like Will Eisner, um, George, uh, uh, no, uh, John Bushima, uh, Frank Rosetta were probably all in those classes. And if you have been trying to learn how to draw online, you've probably uh, picked up the Andrew Loomis books. Or you've uh, um, seen one of those. I don't remember the name of that. Uh, there's another one who, who shows how to uh, deliberately um, uh, show the planes of a face. And both Loomis and this other guy I remem don't remember the name of are students of Bridgman. So this is sort of... Ooh! <laughs> uh, I need to prepare better for these streams. So I am... Um, uh, the Bridgman book is sort of the starting point for a lot of the type of art you see in today's comics through John Bushima and Will Eisner and Frank Rosetta and also through Loomis and Frank Rosetta for a lot of the fantasy art and video game uh, concept art and movie art all of that goes sort of back to Bridgman's classes but Bridgman never uh, never wrote a book himself. He agreed to have a book written consisting of drawings he had made in class, drawings his students had, uh, had made, and sort of cobbled together with notes. So it is a very weird... Uh, it's a very weird book, but it's the information in it, if you learn to sort of distill it, is magnificent. Bernie Hogarth, or Bern Hogarth, uh, was, I don't know if Bern Hogarth what was in his classes, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. You've been looking forward to this live because the last gesture drawing one I found very helpful. And this will be the same. We will be doing the same because I want to do it in this new format where you have more room to look at that art and better be, uh, picture quality and also better uh, audio, I hope. So let's just jump into it. And we're going to do the same pieces as we did last time and then the next time we'll be jumping on so 
this is the first drawing we will be drawing. And um, what it says here is before you make a line, you must have a clear conception of what you want to draw. In your mind, it is necessary to have an idea of what the figure to be drawn is doing. Study the model from different angles. Sense the nature and condition of the action or inaction. This conception is the real beginning of your drawing. And when uh, the book says that, it's not talking about when you draw from your imagination. Because if you draw from Im your imagination, you can start like this and say, ooh, what does that remind you of? And, th and then you can s add pieces and you can come up with something on the paper. What it's talking about is when you're working from a model, you have to have an idea of what the model is doing. Like this model is not just standing there, it's turning to look at something. This is in a movement, even though it is very stylized uh, and it's a very classic um, modeling pose, it is, you have to have that clear conception. Uh, give due to consideration to placing the placing of your drawing on the paper for balance and arrangement. Make two marks to indicate the length of your drawings. And this is one of the steps I have a lot of trouble with because I am not very good at um, at measuring on the paper. I get a lot of things wrong when I measure. Okay? So, um, I will try as well as I can to first set a top and a bottom for him. And then the next steps are block in the straight line as the outline, uh, uh, block in with straight lines the outline of the head, turn it carefully on the neck, marking its center by drawing a line from the Adam's apple to the pit between, uh, or, um, between the collarbones. And then from the pit of the neck, make the line Make one line giving the directions of the shoulders, keeping in mind the marking of its center, which should be between the pit and the collarbone. So if we're looking at here, what we're talking about, and I'll do this a little bit bigger for you. What we're talking about is first setting a bottom and a top. And that doesn't need to be one-to-one -one with the model. And then on that one, you start by placing a with just a little box here, placing the head and a line from the Adam's apple and to between the collarbones. Now we will have to go a little bit back and forth. So I will read these instructions for uh, from you, for you, and then we will go back to the drawing and do them like that. Yeah, Bridgman is difficult uh, because of how the book was written, but I'd still argue that his books are better than the Loomis books, for instance, because it is closer to the source in a way. Uh, Loomis takes Bridgman's lessons and make them more applicable to a much easier commercial advertising style. And if that's what you're going for, then Loomis is the best. At least you know, th that I've read, but um, but if you want something that is 
applicable to a wider set of art, type of art, and applicable to more classical art, then I think uh, Bridgman is better, even though the books are definitely worse because of how they are made. Okay, so the next step is indicate uh, in the general direction of the body by outlining to the hip and the tie. Th thigh, not tie, thigh. At its outermost point, the side that carries the weight. And one of the most important things in the Bridgman books is uh, the weight. There are these fundamental ideas that Bridgman talks about that are extremely essential to how to draw the figure. And one is the distribution of weight, the balance of the figure. And then another, which he sort of comes into in these very first steps, is the line of action and inaction. And we'll get back to that. Follow this by outlining the opposite inactive side of the body, comparing the width with the head. Okay, so you compare with the head and you sort of, here is the torso and the thigh, more or less. We, and then you should uh, have the inactive side as well. Do, can you see my pencil here? Should, is it better if I do like this? Bridgman's concepts don't have a starting point. I disagree. Uh, the, the book is unclear on a lot of these things, but I think the information is in there. It's just difficult to get to it. And I prefer Bridgman's starting points uh, compared to, for instance, how Bushima taught the same thing in How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, where he goes more directly to the skeleton and then the boxes and cylinders which you can apply to the Bridgman style but I don't think Bushima would have drawn as magnificently as he did if he didn't have another set of fundamentals from Bridgman. The pen color is too bright. Okay let's uh, see if we can fix this I think we simply have to do fix it by using a pen instead of a pencil. So this will not be our prettiest drawing. Epic. But you will see the mistakes easier if I do like this. Okay? There's n less room for um, mistakes when I do it like this. And then next week, next Sunday, I will come back more prepared and even have a pencil and have all the lights set. It was better without turning the lights, okay? Like this. We'll try. I will try. Then again, crossing to the action side of the figure, drop a line to the foot. Now you have determined the balance or equilibrium of the figure. Okay, that is this line to speak of. And the reason why this line gives the balance is because everything can be drawn up from that balance point and it should have equal weight, more or less, on each side. Otherwise, the character is imbalanced, okay? So, 
carry the line of the inert side to the knee over and upward to the middle of the figure. Right. Yeah, okay, so that is, he's talking about this line here, you see? Then on the other outer side, drop a line to the other foot. And this is why this book is so hard to use, is that he's not really explaining everything that goes into the drawing, because these are just notes. Which Bridgman book should you buy if you're just starting out? This one is great. The print quality isn't all that good, but it is. it has all the Bridgman books in it, and um, it's the cheapest edition I found. If you're brand new, try Loomis drawing for all it's worth. Yes, you can definitely try Loomis as well. I'm, I'm just... Um, when it comes to comparing Loomis and Bridgman, I will always falter to, towards Bridgman, also for beginners, because I think you pick up a lot of things that makes your art a bit stiffer if you go directly to Loomis. That's my opinion. And then we go over here. And then we read this part to the end, at the end. Or no, we read this part now and then we go over here. Sorry about that. These few simple lines place the figure. They give its general proportions, indicate its active and inactive sides, its balance, its unity, its rhythm. And that's the core of the Bridgman method. It is, it's not about measuring the anatomy with cylinders uh, uh, and w with counting how many heads uh, tall a figure is, but it's about the rhythm, the unity, the balance, the action and inaction, which is why I prefer it. Bear in mind that the head, chest and pelvis are the three large masses of the body. They are in themselves immovable Think of them as blocks having four sides, and as such, they may be symmetrically placed and balanced, one directly above the other. In this case, the figure would have no movement. But when these masses bend backwards, forwards, turn and twist, shift, the shifting of them gives action to the figure. So what he's talking about here is if you make a little block for the head, and then a little block for the torso and a block for the the hips that's all you need for the uh, uh, for the figure but if they are placed like this there is no action there is no movement but if you place them let's say you place the head block like this and then you place the show uh, the torso block like this okay and then you place the hip block like that then that actually tells you all you need about the movement okay so this shoulder goes up here it, it it's here is the action side, the inaction side. Here, the arm must, it must go backwards. While here, let's say it goes upwards. And the same with the legs. It will tell you which leg is the balancing leg, okay?
Huh? Okay, so this figure is basically a uh, head going sort of like this together with a let, let's look at it again a torso going slightly like this and the hips going a little bit more to the other side and that creates the action and inaction of the drawing we'll continue with that whatever positions these three masses may assume no matter how violently they may uh, be drawn together on the uh, one side there is a corresponding gentleness of the line on the opposing inert and uh, inert side and a subtle elusive living harmony flowing through the whole which is the rhythm of the figure okay so in this case here is the action it is the bending here and because we have our active side here we'll also have it here and this other this side reacts to this side and this side reacts to that side okay and the thing is this isn't strictly about how the body is um, anatomically is in reality it is about how to draw it conveying vitality and life and motion so yeah it is pinch and, pinch and stretch as you would know in um, in uh, cartooning in animation okay let's finish this little piece starting again with the head thinking of it as a cube with front sides top back and base draw it on a level with the eye foreshortened or in perspective now this is also a very bad description of what you're going to do but what he's talking about is simply what I've been doing here it is imagine it as a cube and find the eye level and then draw the neck here again action in action uh, outline the neck from the pit of the neck uh, and from the pit of the neck draw a line down the center of the chest again very badly described in the book At the uh, at the right angle of this line, where the stomach and the chest joins, draw another line and then draw lines to indicate the rib cage as a block, twisted, tilted, or straight according to its position. So we did this block a little bit wrong. It goes a little bit more like this, and then now draw the thigh and the leg which support the greatest part of the weight of the body making the thigh round the knee square the calf of the leg triangular and the ankle square then draw arms so that sort of um, says how silly this book I is written is that it ends with then draw arms nothing more but 
that's sort of a by effect of how it was put together and the information in it is still as relevant. I want to do this figure once again and try to just talk my way through it while you guys can um, ask questions if you want. So we started by placing top and the bottom and starting to imagine the figure here. He is, I think he's almost turning away from something, but he's leaning on this foot, that's the balance foot, and then he is turning slightly away and looking up here. That is the action that's happening. So we started with just indicating the face and you should do this from a real life model that, that that's what this book is created for and then after after that we tried to place one of the lines of action, which is the hip here and the torso, okay? And then above here was, we found the balance of the figure by drawing a line down to the foot. One of the things that are beautiful here that I don't see almost anyone doing. So look at how twisted the arm is, how twisted the leg is. Most people will draw the forearm like this, like it's like it's straight, or the leg like it's straight, but there is a bend to it, especially when you see how one side uh, shows the definition of the muscle, one side is the inactive side. Okay. And a lot of the things that Bridgman talk about, like drawing the um, knee as a square, and the thigh as a circle is about rhythm. It's not about people actually having square knees. It's about how to convey the rhythm of it. Okay, so I think the, the next point was uh, something like, you see here, I'm already a bit out of step with the, the with his drawing. And what I'm doing is I, I'm trying to not draw it exactly as he said, but trying to understand the concept, the concept of the action and the inaction, the inaction and the action. Action, inaction. Did the chat 
just disappear or, or boom, boom, boom. let's see here something happened with the chat on my end okay it's back I'm super glad you're streaming this because I asked for this one time yeah I will be streaming this every Sunday I will be uh, streaming uh, this I'm trying to learn how to draw better bit by bit okay I'm drawing along excellent okay so we will be going through every chapter of this book and trying to figure out what is said and why it says the things it said and what it means to draw it now this is the action side in action side A action side in action side Again, this is not because it, it is actually the way the body always works, though it does work like this, but it's um, but it's um, it's how to get rhythm into the art. And you know, if I did this with something else than uh, marker, that would probably be ideal. But um, it's not supposed to be You, your training art isn't supposed to be beautiful and that, that, that's one of the things you see, now, now people ask me all the time what do you do if you are having an art block well this is one of the things you can do you can practice art block is about not managing to uh, create anything of beauty anything that ends up looking like you want it to look but um, mm, 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 mm. this doesn't have to come out as beautiful because that's not the point. And also, even when it comes out as uh, wonky, as this, and you see, this has a very elegant flow to it. And this is a, d this doesn't. Even then, we can just. Uh, Try to. No, this doesn't work. Let's uh, find. Does this work? Yeah. Let's go over here and try to create some shadows on him and see how the figure starts to. Pop. A lot of the subtleties were sort of hidden under a lot of the, uh, the lines that might be right and they might be wrong. So going over like this can be a way to just Highlight what actually is happening there and, and what is just the, the 
happy little accent. So yeah. That looks decent enough for today. Yeah, so so uh, let's do the story about uh, how Bridgman drew these drawings. So um, the legend says that Bridgman's art classes were huge. Uh, and in order for all the students to look at what he was drawing, he didn't draw it on a blackboard or, or, or anything like that in front of them. He had a board going down from the roof at, a, at an angle. And he was a tiny little man and he had a long stick with a big uh, piece of charcoal or a, a big piece of graphite on and he would draw stand on the floor and draw with this long stick on the ceiling or on the the board uh, at an angle from the ceiling so that everyone could see could look up and see the art and legend has it that a few of these drawings in the uh, Bridgman book are the actual ceiling drawings that Bridgman did, which explains why some of them are so incredibly wonky. But also, it's just marvelous how tight they are. Some of them are student drawings. Some of them are sketches he did outside of the classes. But some of them are allegedly the ceiling drawings as well. And just look at how beautiful this stuff is. Okay, so that was the first chapter of the Bridgeman book. And that is all we'll do today uh, because I am really tired. Uh, I hurt my back and I didn't sleep at all, almost. I, I slept just a little bit last night because my back is hurting so much. Um, now I will be answering a few art related questions. Uh, so that will go probably about 15 minutes more, but we will not be drawing while we do that, how we will be turning the camera and, and turning off uh, this little camera. OK, so if you have art related questions, we will go through them now. But before that, um, if you want more streams like this and if you want more other types of streams and more fun videos and all that stuff, then do consider becoming a member either here or on Patreon. Just right now, I, um, right before this stream, I launched two new update videos for people who support. If you support with $10 a month, you will get one monthly art update video exclusive and if you um, post, uh, no, if you support with $25, you will get the vanity updates every week about mental health, fitness, uh, and the vanity project. So now that that said, let's turn this camera around. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. And I'm upside down. Maybe I shouldn't have done this like this. I will figure it out. I will figure it out. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Two seconds here. Let's turn 
off this one and we will sorry about that this isn't the most professional moment ever but I think we're good and we'll need to focus again okay are we good Mm -mm. Any art related questions, I will answer them now. Okay, so I'll scroll through and see if I. Can find a question here. Okay, so I, I answered this one question even though I didn't see it, and that was what you do when you have art block. Uh, oh, 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 oh. And uh, I can. Oh. How do you train on spacing and negative space? Sorry, here. Um, okay, we'll first take the art block question and then we'll take the negative space question. So the art block is, art block happens to everyone. Uh, we all have periods where we feel our art is working and we're reasonably satisfied with it, hopefully, and we have periods where everything is a struggle. Now, the usual thing that people do when they are struggling with their, their art is they lose their motivation and then they stop drawing. And now, especially if you are a beginner artist, if you stop drawing for a week, how many days do you need to get your hand warm again? Probably at least a few hours, if not a few days. And what happens is that you think you have this art block because you're not satisfied. So you stop drawing and then you get inspiration. Maybe I should draw this. And you sit down and your hand isn't working. So you think you still have art block. If you, however, have a daily type of practice where you do something like sketching from real life uh, or um, if you follow a book like the Abridgment books or if you go to classes or if you do something like the Daily Ink Monster, then those are great ways of doing something daily that keeps your hand warm through the art block so that when inspiration comes again, you'll be ready. And, and then you know, you'll still have periods where drawing is hard, but they won't be that long and you'll still be drawing through them. And after a while, you can do good stuff through them as well. And um, yeah, so just keep drawing, find out things that makes it possible for you to draw without losing motivation. Say that, okay, exercise uh, 10 minutes a day, sketching, doodling. And that's That might be enough. Okay, how do you train on uh, spacing and negative space? That is a good question that I am um... okay so let, let's look here sorry that I'm I was out of focus okay so if you look at uh, if we say that this is what you're supposed to draw okay 
What is the negative space here? We're supposed to draw this line here for the face and this line here for uh, the hand. That is the positive space. But what's the negative? Okay. The negative is everything in between here. And the way you use it is that instead of trying to figure out how long this line is or how long this line is, you can instead draw the negative space as, w as a whole shape. So you're drawing this shape in between instead of drawing these positive spaces. And what the negative space is depends on what you're drawing. For instance, if you are drawing the, the refrigerator in the background, and the stairs, then, then I'm part of the negative space. So, so, so in order to practice negative space, you draw, you sit down and you draw, let's say you take these two things and put them on your table. And then instead of drawing them, you draw what's in between them. And the reason you do this is that it's a great measuring tool. Okay, so that's one way of practicing negative space. What types of art supplies do you use? Well, um, I use Indian ink from Talents. Today I was drawing on, on plain old copy machine paper because we were just practicing, but. Uh, uh, Regularly, I use um, 300 grams paper from Fabriano, which is a student grade paper. It's not an artist grade, it's a student grade paper called, let's see what it's called, it's called Start. Fabriano Start. And for my purposes, most of the time, student grade is more than good enough. And uh, regular watercolor brushes, nothing too fancy. Yeah, so, so uh, negative space is drawing what you're not drawing. So instead of uh, fixating on drawing a leg or a nose, you're drawing the space in between the objects you are drawing. So that space can be, for instance, now I can see that on my nose I have a very clear shadow like this. So when drawing the nose, instead of drawing the nose, I can draw the sh shape of the shadow behind, uh, between the nose and the eye, and then I can draw the shadow here, and, and I can basically I can shape all the negative space and draw these as abstract shapes instead of trying to draw the positive space, which is the nose. Of course, if you're focusing on the shadows, then in some sense the shadows become the positive space, but. It's more a way of thinking and a tool of measuring. Okay, so thanks for the answer. Uh, uh, the question comes from a lack of equilibrium sense which one of my teachers noted. So when we're talking about um, negative space in a composition, then that becomes something uh, a little bit different. So, so, so uh, 
I, I don't know if um, I can find something here to illustrate it with. Well, uh, what I can do is if I go to my website, sorry for this, and then I go back to OBS and I turn on the window capture uh, uh, and I use a full screen, but there's a full screen. Then I go back to OBS. Does. Uh oh, sorry about this. I need to get a b get better acquainted with my streaming setup. Uh, there's probably a much easier way to do this than what I'm doing right now. So sorry. Uh, where do you get my ink? I get my ink from a local art store. Uh, so if I go to my site here, and if I, uh, I think I will go to, uh, uh, pre-release. Okay, this is from my adaption of uh, um, of uh, the fairy tale, the traveling companion. You can watch that on YouTube, and here you see these heads on poles. So that is this whole field here is a uh, let me see is a field of meaning. It's a meaningful shape for, oh no, you're, you can't see the cursor. Sorry, two seconds more. Oh, oh, oh. Capture cursor. Okay, I can't see the cursor. Okay, so this field is one meaningful field, and this castle is one meaningful field, and these heads, and also this sun. Everything else is sort of the negative space. And there's a couple of things that can happen. For instance, if these two figures are locked together, then you your eye can get trapped in here. Like, like if you see, let's uh, zoom in here. If you see this shape, which was supposed to be two heads on poles, it gets sort of locked in here and, and you're trapped inside the shape. And it becomes a little bit hard to see what's happening. But here it's more open and your eye can wander freely around. I'm using the shapes in the negative space to draw very clear lines down to the castle. Everything here are lines pointing to the castle, even though the the stakes which the heads are on are um, are vertical. The placement of everything draws you in towards the castle. So I'm using all my negative space here in order to point you towards the castle. Uh, Which other? Yes, again here. You see how the sky goes sort of, um, really it should almost go uh, the other way like this, but I want everything to point towards that sun. 
everything points towards the sun because that is where the character is going. So by using the negative space of the composition in that way, I'm hopefully making the negative space meaningful and also hopefully making it cool to look at. And that helps with overthinking what you are uh, drawing then. So what was that a reply to? Let's get the pop-out chat again because that's easier to manage. Uh, when I'm doing portraits, figure drawing or characters, I have four problems. Okay, what are your four problems? I'm sorry, uh, I need a better, I need to figure out a better setup for uh, my live so that I'm not out of focus all the time and so that I can easily read the chat. So seeing if Sorceress uh, has the follow-up to her problem or otherwise we will just end it here because I'm tired and I will be back. Um, oh, there is the follow-up. So I will answer this and then I will end it for tonight and come back with the next part of the Bridgman book next Sunday. And in between we will have a, another live where I draw what you want on Thursday. Now let's see what uh, Sorceress is writing. Number one, I have trouble with realism. I also have trouble with shading, pressing too hard on a pencil, causing a harsh outline. And I also have trouble with proportions. So what it sounds like is uh, that, that, that in reality you probably have problems with uh, the fundamentals still. Um, we, we, and I'm not saying this to try to be facetious but because that is usually it. When you can identify, like, I have trouble with the shading and with the realism and with two hard lines, that then all of those problems are probably connected in one larger problem. And what I would suggest is, first of all, if you're having too many, uh, too much trouble, with um, with heavy lines, then I would suggest learning how to scribble, how to do these random shapes smoothly and flowingly again and again and again. There's two ways you can do this. You can do this by making a alternative symbol or you can do it wildly and faster and faster and not repeating the same shapes and this will start training your hand to move in a much smoother and more controlled way and then you can start doing it with, with very light touch and with a hard touch and varying the lines uh, just to get control over your uh, tool. Because if you don't have control over your, your tool, it's almost impossible to think about the realism or shading or anything like that because you're thinking about how to move your pencil or brush or uh, uh, pen. And so you need 
to familiarize yourself enough with your tool so that you're not really thinking about that. You just know how that works. And those types of scribbling exercises are one way of doing that. And then regarding realism, um, there are sort of two approaches to realism. One is what we've been looking at today from Bridgman books, which is constructive realism, how to construct a drawing. The other is impressionistic realism. So I would suggest studying both. The impressionistic part is if I'm now just looking, I'm, I have a mirror right be, uh, tween, be, uh, behind the camera, and this is going to be impossible because I'm going to draw mirrored. But if I look at uh, the mirror uh, and I try, not, I'm trying not to actually draw my face. I'm trying just to draw, for instance, the light and the shade. I don't care that it is a face. That is completely irrelevant for me. I'm just looking at the negative space, at the shapes of the dark and the light. I don't care if the dark is uh, if it's the mouth, or if it's the beard, or if, it, or if it's the shadow, I'm just looking at light and dark, and I'm squinting my eyes in order to see light and dark better. I don't care if the the uh, uh, light and dark is the. Um, I, I, I'll just uh, fix this portrait a, a little bit so you can see better what I did try to draw. Like this, this was more or less what I was trying to draw. And uh, yeah, I don't care uh, what I'm drawing. I don't care if it's hair or background or if it is a nose or anything like that. I'm, if I'm working with just one tool, like one pencil or a brush or, or charcoal, I just care whether it's light or dark. If I'm working with uh, oil painting or something like that, then I just care if it's the right color. Light or dark, right shade. And that's everything. You, so one of the methods of learning how to draw is object oriented, where you draw you construct an object and the other way of learning how to draw is uh, impression oriented where you just translate what you see down to the paper with simplification okay uh, so so those personally I uh, like practic practicing both of those things at the same time. If you can only choose one, because you have limited time, I would focus on learning how to draw impressionistically what you see. For instance, with a book like Betty Edwards's Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, Because those tools you learn from drawing impression, uh, impressionistically like that are tools you later can translate into learning constructive drawing more efficiently. Because when I'm looking at, for instance, the figures in uh, Bridgman's books, I'm... Um, 
in order to translate them and to draw them, I'm using the impressionistic techniques. I'm using the technique of measuring the negative state, of uh, measuring light and dark, and all of that, okay? Uh, using caricature techniques uh, to capture lightness and toning it down is a good is good advice as well. Uh, I've not read Blood Meridian, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all next uh, week. Uh, hopefully, you got something out of this. Uh, hopefully, I wasn't too scrambled in the head because I'm really tired today. And hopefully this was fun. And uh, if you like it, then do check out my website, ungeharuholm.com, where you can get art and originals and prints uh, and support me like that. You can become a YouTube member. You can send super chats. And um, if you like my art and want to support me without... without using any money then all my art is available for free use so you can download it you can copy it you can even sell it and as long as you put my name on it that's supporting me thank you see you next week